Once again, we come together as community to take part in a conscious conversation circle as we gradually continue to shift the paradigms of how we talk, think, and live within this world around us. This is Skull Babylon, and you're about to listen to episode 74 of Paradigm Shift Radio. At the start of the episode, we celebrate the awesome content being created and shared through the new Video Inspiration Station project, which is creating an awesome compilation of community-created videos. From there, we had our friends Noah, Rebecca, Mike, Bryce, and Maria on as we covered a variety of topics. In addition to putting forth the encouraging message to connect with those around us, much of the conversation related around gaining a better understanding through words of our multidimensional nature as human beings. Through this, we also talked about understanding what intuition is and how we can strengthen our relationship with it. In the later half of the episode, we related the topic back to discussing dream exploration to help encourage all of us to continue to write our dreams down so that we can accelerate the rate at which we learn in both this state and beyond. If Paradigm Shift Radio is something you enjoy listening to, then we welcome you to share it with some of your friends and get them involved as well by sharing the main website at ParadigmShiftCentral.com. And if you want to get involved even further, then order your supply of shift buttons to connect with people where you are to assist with the awakening of consciousness. And be sure to use the promo code PSR to add bonus buttons to your order. Keep listening to PSR for additional chances to win a free supply of shift buttons to share. The more orders people place, the more buttons we give away for free free. Because remember, this is more than just a show for our entertainment. This project is a practice to help us connect and shape ourselves as we continue to help shape the world around us, one step at a time. Thank you for listening, thank you for being a part of the shift, and enjoy the show. It's true that a small group of people is enough to change the world. And though those numbers may be relative, Because after all, the microcosm is the macrocosm. And what's happening here tonight is a reflection of what is happening everywhere. This is Skull Babylon. You're tuned in for another exciting episode of Paradigm Shift Radio. So welcome once again, everybody, and shout out to everybody who is with us live, 17 users in the live chat. And uh, yeah, I'm just ready to sort of chill out tonight. Don't got anything too serious planned. You know, in terms of Paradigm Shift Radio, you can check out the website, ParadigmShiftCentral.com, and find out more about what this project is about. And long story short, there's a bunch of us all across the world who have been inspired to create physical community, to be able to have physical conversation, to interact with the people where we live, to com- to continue to talk about the things that we don't usually get a chance to talk about in uh, mainstream culture. So, uh quick list of things like that could be related to meditation and mindfulness and chakras and energy and vibrations and uh, perceptions of reality, psychedelic experiences, my good buddy Sasquatch, UFOs, and anything else that really comes up that will just help us continue to gain a better perception, a better perspective, a continued perspective as to like what this reality is and, and just what the what the heck are we doing here, you know, so to speak, but uh, more so what can we, what can we do while we are here? So uh, again, guys, just give me another confirmation in the live chat within 1111 if everything sounds good and you guys are excited for another awesome show that we got lined up here tonight. And uh, keeping an eye on the live chat, so show to all the beautiful people in there. And of course, please continue to share the show uh, since... In terms of technical stuff, uh, normally, you know, if we have like a guest, I'll definitely be working on getting the word out there. But in this case, I don't always sort of get a chance to promote these episodes where it's just like sort of open conversation style, which is what we'll be doing here tonight. So if you guys want to continue to put the word out there and uh, we'll be able to get some more people involved and, of course, engaged with the idea of what this whole paradigm shift project is about. Because we're always always encouraging people to get involved, whether it simply be through listening to the radio show, thinking about starting up a paradigm shift community where they are, or just continuing to be able to engage with the online community. And uh, that's something that I will be mentioning in terms of community news. So just before I get into the community news, I just want to be able to remind people that now is a good chance to call in. So I know my good buddy Noah, uh, he's uh, from Paradigm ship one and he's theoretically should be listening right now so uh noah you can call in now if you would like and i'm always curious to hear what he's got to say very one of my one of my really close buddies very intelligent guy uh always always a pleasure to be able to hear what ideas are, are reflecting off of him that he has to share so we'll get there when we get there and uh what i wanted to mention in terms of community news is this whole video inspiration station that is happening on ParadigmShiftCentral.com. And this is a really big thing, and you guys would have known because I would have talked about it in a, in a few episodes back, actually. But it's continued to evolve. There's a little bit more foundation behind it, and it's like a legitimate thing at this point. And what it is, 
through facebook.com slash paradigm shift central, people within the community are using that as a platform to be able to share the videos that they are creating. So a lot of other Facebook pages, you know, you're just like grabbing an article from the internet, posting this, posting that. What we're trying to do with the facebook.com slash paradigm shift central portion, which is showing up through the main website as well. Any video that's posted there shows up through paradigmshiftcentral.com. But we're just trying to streamline this potential for people to be able to get excited about not only watching the videos that are being made by people in our community, and obviously, you know, like that's exactly where I'm coming from. This whole thing started because of the videos that, that we're making because this we are the YouTube generation, so to speak. So what it is in doing, it's this collective, it's a continued collective education, collective inspiration. So check out paradigmsessential.com slash IS is the uh, short form for inspiration station. And you can find all of the episodes, all of the, sorry, all of the videos that people have been posting up there. And uh, yeah, let me just, let me just give a shout out to some of the awesome people who, who have been posting. And uh, just in terms of latest videos, we got, uh, yeah, Otto or Odo. I haven't fully learned how to pronounce that in a first, like in actual like vernacular terms, but also got like Joseph and Keely and, uh, oh, um, Silent something or other. He posted a really cool video. It's the fourth one. It's called Golden Balance. Definitely check it out. And of course, we got Jam Pants, one of our Paradigm Shift admins. We got the Gianna and Genevieve twins. We got uh, Lucid philosophy damn it i forget his name but he's pro- it's mike i'm pretty sure and he should be here and uh yeah and then we got philosophical he has got some awesome videos like really super inspirational stuff uh really looking forward to having him and any of the other people uh who are involved with this community project on the show and uh yeah philosophical has got some really cool rhymes so anyways those are a few of the people and of course we got uh brianna as well she's got her videos that go up regularly and uh shout out to uh brianna i'm pretty sure she's she is with us in the live chat right now, so hello to Brianna. And uh, yeah, so that is a really cool thing that I'm excited about. So of course, if you haven't yet, if you're listening to this, go to facebook.com slash Paradigm Shift Central, and that is where you will see the videos coming up live. So any video that gets put up through there shows up through the main ParadigmShiftCentral.com website. So you can see that what is actually happening is I want to be able to share this global platform for everyone. So think about it this way. It, it, the, the internet is very synchronistic and sometimes you feel like you're like oh you know what's the point of putting out my video like blah 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 but like now knowing that there are people who are going to sync up with it it actually brings like a little bit more encouragement to say like yes like this does matter knowing that that right person might see that right message within my video and sometimes when we're making videos we're just saying stuff and we're like I don't even know what I'm doing but I hope somebody else picks this up and it means something to them like sometimes it sort of feels that way but that's the exciting thing about it so of course like Think about it this way. This is this is going back to the buttons and oh and I'll, okay, I'll talk about the buttons and I did see Noah was in the queue. Uh, he dropped, but we're gonna bring him back on. So Noah is working on his way coming back in. So just in the last couple minutes before he gets here, uh, just reminding you guys that's a, how this whole thing works. And and the fact is like with the buttons, the shift buttons, paradigmshiftcentral.com slash buttons, those have the website on them and those are things that you use to give to people to activate conversation with them and to actually be able to like spontaneously make new friends. Like I sort of have like this tagline of like like what's that? Like all your friends are busy tonight, got no one to hang out with, no friends? Don't worry about it. You've got shift buttons. Here, get take some shift buttons downtown with you. Like here, sir, have a button. Whoa, thanks, mister. Like you know, and then it just sort of like expands from there and, and it's cool because it, it invites them to find out about the website. Through the website, they find out about these videos. And, of course, they find out about everything else, which is the radio show. And another cool thing is that you can actually just, like, say to people, be like, be like yo, okay, like, let's hook up through Facebook. Therefore, go to the main website, and I'm going to post in the live chat to the main website, and then you can find me through there and just be like, hey, you know, like, George, this is, this is so-and-so. We ran into each other today. Feel free to add me on Facebook because that is the other thing. So two last things i got to mention real quick because this is like part of tactics. It's really important, and, and I want to really see like this utilized within the community. And, think, and just I'm sure you guys will understand as soon as I say it, but right now the live chat is a really popular thing with the radio show. Like That's a big part of it. You guys get here, and you get to connect with one another. And, of course, at any point, share your Facebook profile so you guys can continue to connect beyond the show. And the live chat's a really exciting thing. What I want to see us do is outside of the moments when we're specifically doing this radio show, which is right now for the next like two hours, is to be able to use the live chat through the main website. So the live chat through the main website is really easy to sign in when you, you need to sign in like through your Facebook account, through your Twitter, or just like as a guest. And then you can basically just like continue the, to engage in conversations. And there was 
some you can actually scroll back on previous conversations. There was a really good conversation that happened earlier, like Monday and Tuesday, and it was like all about lucid dreaming. It was uh, and and just you know consciousness in general. It was really cool, and um, I apologize because I forget the names of the people, but they uh, it was Molly and. Oh, Molly and Jonathan? It might have been Jonathan, maybe. But anyways, um, shout out to the people who are using the live chat. And again, paradigmscentral.com slash live chat if you need it. But it's just like a little green thing in the bottom right corner. So you guys can check that out. Check that out after the show. And uh, right now, let's just continue to hang out in this live chat. And uh, again, reminder, share, share your Facebook pages so you guys can connect with one another. If you're listening to the show, you're probably like a pretty like – you're an interesting person. I mean, everybody's interesting in their own way, but there's, if there's something that's drawn you to this, then obviously you want to be able to like talk with people who are interested in the things that you're also interested in and to be able to ask people, like, what are you passionate about? That is a great way to start a conversation. If you're ever like unsure of what to like think to ask someone, like ask them that, like, what are you, what are you passionate about? You know, like what, what, like what inspires, what, what do you follow? What, what inspires you? Because that's like kind of a, a saying that I've mentioned in the past, but this idea, like someone gave it to me. They said like, follow that which inspires you. So just, uh, yeah, a little reminder there. And um, in terms of the buttons, okay, this is, this, is a, this is a cool thing because since it is Christmas, we are in the spirit of giving and uh, just being able to work with that. What I want to be able to do is get some more, fr- more shift buttons out there to the people. And one of the ways that we're going to do that is simply kind of similar to how we've given out tickets in the past for, uh, for some festivals. But basically, anybody who is listening to the show right now, send a message to facebook.com slash paradigm shift radio and just type in like, yes, I would like some buttons, please. P.S. I enjoy your show. Thank you for doing what you do and here you know get in touch with me further and stuff because i always want to like get in touch with like people to find out what they're up to and everything because we're all doing awesome things that's like the super awesome part about this so anyways if you want free buttons even if you want like it, it's 10 buttons we're gonna give out to, like 10 ish buttons and basically like even if you don't want them you can give them as a gift so i think consider it like 10 like like a button token so to speak. So if, even if you get your name pulled at the end, you can still like gift it to someone else. And basically that would be a really cool thing. So again, if you want, if you want a chance to win 10 free shift buttons, go to facebook.com slash paradigm shift radio and just send me a message in, but before the time that the show is over and then we'll be able to continue to get people um, in the loop with this. And if you're listening to the show after after like the episode airs, you can still send a message to the Facebook page, and then we will enter you in for the draw next week is how we'll do it. And here's the other kicker. So this is where I, I want to be able to get more people involved with this. For every – I'm thinking about it. For every like two orders – or three orders, probably two orders, because I want to, you know, like, it, it's that generous ad- idea, but to be able to, like, give out, for the next raffle, right now, we're just going to give away one one batch of free buttons. For the next radio show, we are going to give out, for every two orders that people order of regular buttons this week, we're going to give out one order of free buttons by the next radio show. So, for however many orders of buttons there are within this radio show to the next radio show divide that by half and that's how many free batches we're going to be giving out next week does that make sense so you guys give me an 11 11 in the live chat if you guys think that sounds like a pretty cool idea so that will encourage people to get buttons with the idea that the more buttons that we order the more buttons are getting out there to the people who like don't have buttons yet because that's like part of the idea is that not everybody can can fortunately afford buttons for whatever reason and we still want to be able to get them out there because they're super powerful if you feel that you don't have too many people to like hang out with in your community and if that's kind of like the obstacle that you're dealing with you're like you know i'm really interested in this paradigm shifty stuff but i don't have anybody to talk to the buttons will change that like I uh, like Billy Mays guarantee you will like find someone else where you live. <laughs> Shout out to Billy Mays and Billy Mays the third. <laughs> on that Facebook.com slash infinite third. Remember you're dreaming dot com. But what I be able what I want to be able to do obviously is just be able to get them out there and to get people engaged, get people excited, get people to be a part of this project, to be a part of this global team that we are continuing to build. And uh, it's an evolving thing, slow and steady. But it's definitely beautiful. It's definitely awesome. And uh, yeah, it's definitely about 12-ish minutes into the show. So just babbling on a little bit there for you. <laughs> but I know uh, you guys, uh, if you guys are listening, then of course, shout out to you. So let's bring Noah on. And I'll stop talking for a bit. And uh, Noah's going to continue to share what's up on his end. And of course, if anybody else wants to call in, 
now is a chance. I'm not too sure how long no one's going to be able to stick around, but we want to be able to get more people involved with this practice, involved with this discussion. And remember, that's what it is. It really is just practice. So if you've got something you want to share, if you've, if you've seen a UFO, if you've had some crazy experience, if you want to talk about dream exploration, well, that we're probably going to be talking about that to begin with anyways. Now would be a good time to call into the show. And of course, you can call in off your phone, even if it's just for a bit, because there probably will be a long distance charge. I'm pretty sure it's on the West Coast. Call in through number 347 Five three nine five four nine three, and of course, otherwise, call in through Skype. That's the easier way. Click the Skype icon next to the host number through the link that you are listening to on the page, and uh, launch through your Skype, and you'll be okay with that. So, looks like we actually already do have another person calling in, which is going to be pretty sweet. So, I'm going to bring Noah on, and uh, then we'll just see what's up with him, and then caller who is also on. We'll bring you on in the next couple of minutes once uh, once we get settled here with Noah. So, Noah, if you're ready, bring you on. Here we go. Yo, Noah. How's it going, Skull? Hey, man. Cool, man. Good good to hear from you. Thanks for uh, making yourself available for this one, man. 100%. It, whatever you got to do, it gets done. You know, you got to make time for what's important. Oh, I'm glad. I'm glad you feel that this is important. I mean, it's true. We only we only do this we only do this once a week, and uh, that is a pretty regular thing. But a lot happens in a week. So uh, let me let me ask you, man. I mean, you've uh, uh, it, like no, sometimes you're in London, sometimes you're in Toronto. You're definitely meeting a lot of people. Uh, what what would what have you experienced in in you know the last little bits of uh, time passing through your reality that you feel that you could share with us? Just some ideas that have gone through your head. Well, I'll tell you one thing. Uh which relates to exactly what you just said about meeting a lot of people. Um, that's, that's just it. It's, it's actually going out there and facing that fear. And I know that, you know, we can do it behind the, the mask on, uh, via the internet, Facebook, whatever it is. But I've been practicing literally going up to random people, uh, you know, on a bus or just walking on the street and just being like, so what's life about? What makes you happy? <laughs> Like, what, what do you want from your life? Like, are you living with purpose? Are you are you living with meaning? Like, are you interested in this? Are you interested in that? And, like, it's just amazing the kind of receptivity and people that I've been speaking to. Because it's not about, you know, me coming in and saying necessarily, oh, or, like, are you interested in, just from the get-go, like, are you interested in, like, some crazy topic that there might be, like, oh, he's a madman. But mm-hmm. instead, like, coming back to that universal ground that every human being searches for, which is meaning. And and from there, conversation just goes where it needs to go. Uh, and I found that to be the most effective way to connect with anybody. So, you know, even in the last week, I spoke to somebody who's learning three languages who wants to uh, be a part of the UN. I spoke to a guy who's gotten out of jail and just learning about his experiences in jail and just... It's just amazing how each person in their core, they do want to connect. They just don't necessarily know how. And they're waiting for maybe a mirror like me or like anybody to just kind of start to engage with them. And then a whole world opens. Mm -hmm. So that's just something that I've been working on a lot is just facing that fear and realizing that like every moment can be used for like conscious awareness, conscious expansion, whatever it is that you want to do. Like every moment could be used for that purpose. And that Mm -hmm. like... I could either sit on the bus and kind of just, you know, put on my music or I could could continue the conversation and realize, you know what, this person that I meet could be my best friend. Uh, and that's kind of just the attitude I've been trying to live with here in the last couple months of being back in Toronto, then back in London kind of thing. Uh, and I know you do that too a lot, Skull, but I, I urge anyone listening to this, like, try it out. Like, it, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's also a big test. To, to determine like your confidence in yourself and and what you're about and and you actually confirm your own purpose when you're asked because you get asked it back and then you have to think yeah well what That's am important. I looking for you know mm-hmm. uh, so so I've been doing that a lot and I just find it's amazing I don't know what if you've had some experiences like that recently at all. I think, uh, I mean, it, it sounds like you've been uh, engaged a little bit more than me re- recently. And, and, I mean, I don't. I only get out a couple times during the week, to be honest. I mean, usually, like, on, on Fridays for our, our regular meetings and stuff. But, I mean, yeah, even on the bus, I mean, sometimes I choose to sort of be in my space. But then, like, sometimes if, uh, if, if I do see, like, someone who I, I'm sort of, like, picking up something from, 
And even if I, I'm just like, even if there's a moment where I'm just like, hmm, I wonder if I should give that person like an invite to our regular Paradigm Shift London meetings. At that point, it's like, oh, well, like, I can't not do it now, you know, sort of thing. And then, uh, so, I mean, a recent example would have been like uh, last week, there was a guy on a bus and I, he was reading a book sitting across from me and the book was uh, Requiem for a Dream. And I know, like, uh, I've only seen the movie, and I and I know the like the story in that. I mean, it, it is a lot about life and stuff, and it's a very like psychedelic story too, very psychological as well. Um, so I mean, just in that sense, just as I was walking off the bus, I just like had an invite. I was just like, "Yo, man, like, just like check this out. You'll dig it." And he was like, "All right, cool, cool, man." And then I just went on my way, and he went on his way, and like, because like to be honest, like I was kind of just in my own zone, and I didn't feel like totally just like getting into a conversation with this guy about like trippy stuff. Like, well, there's just so many people on. The bus sort of thing so i mean even in that sense that was the tactic that i i i worked with was something that i would encourage for other people if i mean check out on the paradigm website and go to tools for anybody listening to this and check out the pamphlets there because there's like the pamphlets for the main website that you can cut up and you can use those pretty much in the same way that you can use buttons to a degree in the sense that you can just like give them to people and be like yeah check this out you know they do this crazy radio show every week you might check it out you like you might be interested and then in that sense like you can just give give them out as invites and try doing that. Try like, if, you, if you're not totally comfortable engaging with a conversation fully with someone on a bus, just try like spontaneously like giving it to them and then running off the bus in some like, I, not too sure. sketchy man. Yeah, actually I'll, I will say um, that you, you would appreciate this. Everybody would appreciate this. Um, so when I have my buttons, I, I usually have like three on my backpack and this was so, tr- this was such a trippy thing. This was actually like, it was like three weeks ago, but I was getting off the bus and there was like three people who got off in front of me and then the back doors, you know how they automatically close, right? And you sort of yeah. have to like put your hand on the bar. So I didn't put my hand on the bar. So like, as I stepped through the door, the back door like closed right behind me to an exact micro point that it actually clipped off my back button. And then, like, the bus drove away, and, like, the girl who was, like, behind, or next to me or something, she was like, hey, like, your button fell off. It's still on the bus. And I was like, awesome. Like, that's so cool. Like, <laughs> now somebody's going to, like, pick up that button. And it was a it was, um, it was was um a flower of life with a Merkaba, like, laid over top of it. So uh, definitely somebody would have picked it, picked it up. But I just thought that was, like, such a, a one. Of, it was a very synchronistic experience, the way how the reality just sort of, like, is is very precise in a in a moment like that. I mean, I could have missed it, but the fact that it like clipped it, I don't know. I just thought that was a funny story. Anyways, but yeah, man. Yeah. Um, Noah, I mean, throw in a couple other ideas and let's uh, let's uh, sort of set things up to bring on our next caller here to join in on the conversation as well. Yeah, let's do it. I, I think that the big thing is, is is for me, and I, I, I and it still relates to this conversation, but it's it's honestly overcoming this this need to let's say you know there's people that for example, are more interested in talking about things that are on the radio show, right? And then there's people that... Cause I look at everyone as as whatever they're doing. Like, if you are the world's biggest partier, or you are the world's biggest spiritual seeker, you, you share a common trait, and, and the trait that you share is your absolute, unconditional search for for ultimate good, ultimate meaning, ultimate pleasure. You may search for it in places that you may not find it. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is just because I, I really think that as people like that are interested in these kind of things, that at the base level, what it's really going to come down to is how do we connect with people that are totally and utterly, not only like they may know about these things and have no interest, right? And, and I'm more interested is how do we connect to those people? Because ultimately, as right. great as, and as diverse as these interests are, it's going to come down to compassion for yourself, compassion for others. And, 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 and caring about the, the, the necessary, like, for example, open-mindedness, healthy living, evolution of consciousness. These things are going to be values in, in many ways that are going to need to be shared just through basic factors such as caring for the environment or being healthy. Uh, and I think when you, when you reach people in their heart in a way that is suitable to what their needs are, and to what their interests are, that's when you you know you're going to have this 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 transformation, uh, and it can happen to anybody. And so for me, I've been working on like who am I speaking to, and and how can I actually help that specific person who's going through their specific thing instead of like what can I give tell them about my interesting you know ideas or whatever? Because 
I really think that that's what it's going to come down to. When we're talking about real transformation and a real shift, it's going to have to be through everyone understanding it for themselves. And everybody is so different. And I think as, you know, as whatever you want to call it, as a light worker or someone who cares to, to bring about some changes, it's, it's being able to be in all situations and connect to all people in all situations. Uh, mm-hmm. And I'm just, I'm really working on it. And I have, you know, there's so many different people that uh, I speak to on a consistent basis that are in such diverse uh, facets of life. But I still notice that common ground, which is connect to the soul connect to the soul, connect to the deeper parts and the deeper meaning, whatever it is for that person, then you can have a conversation about pretty much anything mm. and that person is with you. That person is listening. And uh, so, so whoever comes on, like I'd really, I think it's just an awesome kind of thing for to explore is, is how to really connect to anybody and everybody based on who they are and, and what their needs are. Um, Right. It, it, it's amazing to make community. It's a, it's amazing that like I come on in a Sunday night, and like I just know that like I don't have to put any guards down. You know, like I'm really able to like express everything that I'm feeling in amazing ways. But at the same time, I know that that's like it's like a practice ground, right? It's like mm-hmm. we're all training ourselves for something much greater. Uh, yeah. Man. And, and and that's how I look at this paradigm shift stuff. It's like it's training wheels. It's a training ground for the rest of the of the world, essentially. Uh, and and that's, yeah. that's kind of how I'm looking at it right now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, earlier in the week, uh, I mean, not for the first time, but, like, the idea of, uh, like, a psychological gymnasium, the the fact that, like, that's what, like, society is. And I know um, you've had, like, m- us three, like, with Justin as well, have, have had many, like, similar conversations about that. But, yeah, like, a lot of people, you know, when they think about, like, ways to become enlightened you get the the one path of like a yogi going up into the mountains and being in <laughs> silence within himself but then you think about the fact that we sort of like choose to be where we are and here we are many of us are within like this, this jungle this, this this like this sociological jungle the psychological gymnasium that is society that makes it a very very interesting unique and exciting experience due to its like frequency and due to its like constant ability to like it, it's constantly changing it is like this like it is it is like evolution within itself and just like the fact that it's a uh, it's a really o- interesting opportunity for us to be able to be presented with challenges and uh yeah yeah no i think it's um, well there's something uh like really go ahead, go ahead. yeah yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's it's a very deep concept uh within within you know i've spoken but i don't know about on the air but i'm very connected to uh to Kabbalah and to, to the esoteric right. dimensions of Judaism, and there's a very and this applies to everybody. There's a very interesting concept that essentially, you know, there's higher and lower worlds. So we're in the physical world, and and there's filtrations through you know speech and thought and mind, where essentially we get to like the higher higher dimensions of like unity and oneness. And the reason why I say this is just because if you really look at it, you know, the Buddha was 2,500 years ago. You know, the revelation on Mount Sinai, so to speak, with Moses was 3,300 years ago. You know, a lot of the higher, higher revelations that man has able to have been to receive from the infinite or from the universe or whatever you want to call it has been a long time ago. Yes, there's an ongoing communication, but the higher realms were, so to speak, communicated and transmitted to man at a time when, when most people didn't understand these things, but very certain few people who did were on such high levels. And essentially, the creation isn't complete until we bring down the highest levels of these spiritual connections to the physical world. And so this whole filtration process is like, we're now in entering into the realm where all these higher revelations have happened, and now we're, we're working into a, a world where what's most important isn't that, but it's actually action. Because action is what's going to complete the cycle of creation. So we've been on the shoulders of giants, so to speak, in the sense that, you know, there's these people who, who, throughout history, who have just changed the face of psychology and connection to the divine and in whatever realm. But that essentially our goal right now is we've been given the spoils of it. We've been given the spoils of that wisdom. And we don't need to necessarily... It's always great to have an ongoing connection, 
But what I'm suggesting is that in today's world, and we can see it outwardly, that there is so much uh, problems in the physical, which obviously relate to the spiritual. But there are just there's so many things that each person has to make a choice what issue they want to tackle, that it's almost yeah. like our spirituality has to be grounded in the physical. And that that's actually what completes the cycle. Because it started much much in the high, much more in the higher worlds, like people having you know more personal revelations, and now today it, it, it seems like the more people that are waking up, the more we're realizing that it's got to be so grounded in action and rooted in the physical, especially also being from a Western world where we know it's not necessarily the most practical thing for us to kind of leave the world uh, to have a spiritual life, mm-hmm. um, and it's just this natural progression that's existed in a chain of of you know thousands of years where we're finally reaching the point where spirituality is closest to the physical. It, it means in a way that mm. we're on the lowest lower level in the sense that you know we're on the shoulders of people and and in all different religions and spiritual traditions that really set the foundation. But now it's up to us. What do we do with these revelations? What do we do with this wisdom? It's all pointing to this world, to the to the fixation or to the perfection of the physical. Otherwise, we may as well not exist, in my opinion, because I'm here. Why am I here? Why do I have a body? You know? And, and that's just something that, like, I, I contemplate a lot and, and think to myself a lot is, this is the next stage, and, and how can I start to get into that practical, activist kind of spiritual mode? And not it's not for everybody, but I think it's it's definitely in line with, with kind of where we're headed overall in terms of the urgency for action right now. Cool man, solid yeah. points. Well said. Thanks for uh, thanks for getting that out there, man. Appreciate it. Yeah. Um, just uh, sort of looking at the live chat. Are you in the live chat, Noah? Uh, no. Okay. Um, G. E. Grimes was talking. He just said uh, he's got a question for you. You can try yeah. answering this. And afterwards, uh, yeah. Apologies to the caller. We still got on hold. Definitely bring you on. Uh, I guess maybe even just like within the next minute, and then uh, yeah, we'll see I'm happy whether the question. Well. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. We'll have everybody on. So, anyways, uh, G. Grime was saying in the live chat, he said, Noah, should we not take notice to the natural process of cause and effect? Physicality is effect, no? So, I'm not sure if you have an exact response Uh, for that. Yeah, I mean, like, in terms of cause and effect, especially, I think that's actually the whole point of this whole thing. It's, I think what's so interesting is that, especially growing up, and getting to a certain point, like, I, I, I don't know, I've lived a certain amount of my life, and uh, I may not have been aware of a lot of the basic everyday decisions that I make, and the cause and effect that they have. Like, you know, I just thought, you know, I just went to the store and bought a hamburger from McDonald's, but that was it, right? Like, there wasn't anything else, you know? There wasn't anything else other than the immediate, like, that's what it was, you know? Um, but I think that the more you become aware of the little intricacies of the decisions that you make, and and what actually like goes into it so for for example like you know that like everything you kind of do it's not just on the surface i just went and got this thing well how did that how was that made who made it how are the lives the people that kind of live who who had to make that and all these other factors that come in to the cause and effect but they're not really real until you make them real and uh so so for me Sorry, am I still on right now? Yeah. Oh, yeah, dude, you're still, oh, yeah. you're still on. Okay, yeah, I just yeah. kind of cut out. They're not really real until we become aware that we're actually creating those causes and effects. So I don't know if that was a, necessarily the question, but I think it's more like, for me at this point, with, with cause and effect, is just trying to be aware of all the different intricacies of, of the decisions that have led me to be alive mm. and the decisions that now I say, okay, I've lived a certain way up until this point. Now, what are the decisions I make? What are the ramifications for others that the decisions I have made? Uh, like, how do they affect others? And so I don't I don't know if he was asking more about, like, how the cause and effect of those people affect now uh, or, like, of the past spiritual history affects now, but obviously we're part of a chain that has existed for, you know, ever. Uh, we're all connected to, like, connected to a mother who's connected to a mother who's connected to a mother for for all we for as long as we can remember. So 
uh, I just think it's, it's so cool when we really think about how this whole history thing is just one long timeline that's all happening kind of, it seems like it's happening in like succession, but it's really like all one because like everything I do now like will be the future and everything that was in the past is now. Um, and I think just for all of us, it's just to recognize every time we would do something like think, what am I actually doing? Because cause I didn't, I didn't, I don't think, I think it was really easy to kind of get caught up in the fact that it's just like, I went to the store and I bought this, but there's really so much more. And that's why, you know, people are, are a little bit more conscious of their decisions and it's more difficult because, you know, it's so much easier for me to go, for example, just to grab like a, uh, like, uh, I'm just giving this an example, like, because I just won't go to McDonald's, for example, but like, it's so much easier for me to kind of just go to pick up McDonald's and think I'm not really affecting the world. But right. I I know that I am in the very smallest way. Uh, so cause and effect is, is is definitely like a huge thing that actually one should just bring into their awareness. I guess I don't know if that made sense for what he was asking. Um, whether I mean I think either way there's some yeah. more stuff that came out of that. So cool. All right, okay. Um, I'm going to bring on the next caller now, and uh, actually, just before I do that, I just wanted to mention one thing. Uh, I, with the idea of going back to the opportunity for people to win some free complimentary shift buttons by messaging the facebook.com slash paradigm shift radio show um, Facebook page, but just wanted to be able to say, uh, if people are outside of North America, not totally sure how it's going to work. You're still welcome to have your name in the draw, and I guess we'll just like figure it out later, so to speak, but uh, yeah, shipping out of country does uh, cost like additional things but we'll figure it out we'll figure it out so even if you are feel free to still put your name in regardless and uh trying to get those buttons globally are the objective here so <laughs> anyways all right so i know i'm um, just reading some of the live chat uh people were interested in, you know what are other ways that people are taking action so maybe we'll get into more of that but of course there's plenty of infinite topics that we can continue to talk about here on paradigm shift radio and we do invite other people to continue to call in so we're gonna bring this caller on and uh, we'll just see where it goes from there so let me just uh, hold on. No, I just want to mute you for a second because there's just sure. like additional feedback from you. But I'll bring you back on if and when. So, but yeah, Perfect. like when definitely. Cool. Thanks, Kevin. All right. Okay. So, a caller from area code seven hundred five, just bringing you onto the air now. Here we go. Hello, caller. Can you hear us? Hey yo yo, what's up? <laughs> yo yo, caller. Can you uh, give us your name and where you're calling from? Sure. I'm calling from Port Carling, Ontario, beautiful Minnesota. Okay. And my name is Rebecca Croden. Right on, right on, Rebecca. Awesome, awesome to hear from you. Okay, <laughs> let me just let me just bring Noah back on. I mean, it was just like the static that we we're getting, but it's probably going to be okay, anyways. Noah, hey, say, say hello. <laughs> hey, Rebecca, how's it going? I do. Hey, Noah. It's good. <laughs> cool, cool. So, yeah, anyways, long story short, we're all friends here and uh, all of uh, connected through the Paradigm Shift London community. Paradigm Shift London, Ontario, Canada, Facebook.com slash Paradigm Shift London. So, anyways, <laughs> Rebecca, um, no, I'm, I'm, I'm actually I'm actually glad you you called in. You're you're one of the admins for, for Paradigm Shift Muskoka. And uh, just based on the activity that I've been seeing through your Facebook feed, looks like you guys have been uh, having some regular events over the last couple of weeks. So, in addition to anything else you want to share, I'm, I would love to just sort of hear how things are going on your end they're going pretty well i started paradigm shift um Muskoka about four or five weeks ago and it's been a little bit slow but that's kind of expected especially here in a small town everyone's like spread out secluded and it's just kind of not really an open-minded place i would say i'm sure there's open minds everywhere sprawled out that's why i want to have these and um yeah, like, we meet at the Central Library, and one gentleman has been coming out every week. Um, he missed the week before, but he's an older guy, and he um, it was his first time meditating. And I think that he really likes it because he keeps coming. So, cool. um, and uh, I just keep getting more, more and more interest, like... I work at a restaurant here in the, um, Port Carling, and I'll pick up on, like, a few people who are um, open-minded, and one gentleman, Glenn, he talks about, or he does astrology, he's, like, part of the Astrology Association, and um, um, he's interested, really interested in coming, so I guess it's just, like, people like 
like him who are open minded that that I that we attract, right? So Hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, that's cool. I mean, the fact that like you're even able to uh, use your work environment as an opportunity just to not only like connect with other people, but to actually be able to almost like test your intuition, so to speak. I, I remember doing similar things uh, back when I used to work at um, Green Earth, which is just like a store in the mall that actually like sold crystals and stuff too. And and yeah, I mean, the, be, be it there or anywhere, I mean, there's always opportunities for us to sort of just feel things out. And uh, yeah, like I mean, I'd be I'd be curious, like. Rebecca, what does intuition like mean to you? And and maybe like has that changed over time as you've uh, spiritually progressed yourself? Um, I f- um has it changed over time? Maybe. I think it's intuition is like aligning your intentions first of all and like what um what you want to manifest and then that's what you would use is your intuition to recognize the things that you're trying to manifest and like um say you wanted to manifest um um someone to do yoga with for instance well then that would be on your radar because um that's what you want to manifest so intuition to me would i don't know just like going with your feeling of a certain person because everyone has an aura about them so you can sort of pick up on that um, I feel like some people are more sensitive than others to to energies, and um, but yeah, so I guess that's what intuition is to me. Okay, cool. Well, uh, I, I think uh, I mean I think the topic of intuition is is uh, something we can sort of just like set, sit like sit in on for just like the next couple moments. Because I'd be curious to hear uh, from Noah mm-hmm. as well as to uh, what his thoughts on uh, intuition is, because it's kind of a it, it's a term that we're we're hearing more and more of, and it, it was never really a term that we were taught in school. Uh, I definitely sort of remember being drawn to it and being able to like make sense of it in my own way. And uh, I'll, I'll see. I'll, I'm curious as to what Noah has to say, and, and then I'll see uh, what thoughts I can add to the equation here and uh, it looks like we do have another caller who is interested to uh, be on to the air but not totally confirmed caller calling in from Skype under the Skype name Soupy Goose Uh, if you want to be brought on press 1 in the keypad and we'll be sure to bring you on but again just going to bring Noah back on so Noah yeah um, yeah, like just curious man like what does intuition mean mean to you like how would you explain that to someone who maybe is like never even heard of that term before, so to speak. Well, the best thing about it is that, is that first of all, my intuition is going to be speaking this because I didn't prepare it. So it's kind of <laughs> right. It, it, it's flowing. It's, it's all about. Well, that's interesting. Another just synchronicity. But anyway, to, to me, what what it is is you know I was talking to Zoe. She just said re remembered, and I was going to say that uh, it really is what intuition to me really is 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 getting in touch with something that you already know, um, mm. that you're already you're already intimate with, you just don't know it yet. And then it comes, and then you're like, okay, I know that. And to me, it's it's about this this idea of, and, and again, I, I just because this is who I am, uh, there's a very interesting, and I, this will, I think a lot of people will find this interesting, there's a very beautiful kind of teaching um, that says that, in Judaism, that basically you were taught everything uh, before you were born, and then an angel came and wiped you. Like, there's like people have like under their nose, in between the bridge, it's like there's this little bump kind of thing, and the angel kind of touched that part of the nose, and you forgot everything. And and when you're born, you forget everything. But that you, you really you really do know every everything that you need to know. That when you really get in touch with, it's not it's not just this. It's not just the mind. It's not just the heart. To me, it's it's a combination of both. It's the feeling combined with like a rational, like outtake on what it is that you need to do. Uh, and and the way that I kind of get in touch with that is is first of all asking the questions. Um, a lot of people are very confused because they don't spend a lot of time actually asking the questions that they that they really want to know. So I don't think you know it's something as basic as well. Do I do I really want to work at this job? You know, someone might just think, I don't know what I want to do, but then they're kind of just like sidetracking it. But like, if you actually sat down and allowed your hands to move and you just let go of the 
need to like get a certain answer right away and you let your mind kind of let loose, you would your your the amount of intelligence and the amount of ideas that would come to you would be amazing. And it just you wouldn't even believe what you actually come up with. And I think that for me at least it's 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 about actually just letting loose of of the I guess conscious conscious thinking mind and actually kind of allowing the mind to to speak on almost a random like it seems like this is instantaneous but again I mean if you ask me this 3 days later I might have said the same thing in very different mm-hmm. variations but I'm just allowing myself to go um and I've spoken to you countless times skull about you know the power of being connected through DNA to your ancestors and mm. and being and being really in, in dreams being an outlet for that and 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 I think this really relates to intuition because it's just this idea that within within you inside of you not you know necessarily in somebody else but right inside of you is like this storehouse of all the things that you know and need to know and the more you get in touch with that. And I mean, you could do that in a variety of different ways, like I just said, which is just free write, allowing your mind to just go in a direction and write, or to really just talk and converse either by yourself or with another person, or to ask a question before a meditation, like literally ask the mm. question, uh, should I go to this place? And and you you might get the answer. It's all about putting the intention into it and listening. It requires you to really listen and in a way that you might not be accustomed to, but I do think that intuition is really that that combination of both, you know, y- y- your deliberation, but at the same time your spontaneity of just you know it, just just speak it, and it mm-hmm. comes. And I think I just did that yeah. now, and I I think I actually got to a confident definition of what I think my intuition is. So yeah, I just think you have to trust shabby. yourself. You really have to trust yourself. Um, I think, yeah, yeah, it is, um, like, oftentimes when we don't follow our intuition, it comes as a result of second-guessing ourselves, it it seems. Like, the intuition seems to be that opportunity where you have, like, you're walking down a certain road, and you're just like, maybe I should go this way. And then if you do, you happen to, like, run into a friend in a very synchronistic way. But what would create the reality where you don't is if you say, maybe I should walk this way, or maybe I shouldn't. Yeah, I probably just won't. Yeah, it's probably best that I didn't anyways. And then, like, as of that, you know, you're, like, walking down another reality, but that reality could just be, like, less novel, so to speak. So synchronicity and intuition go hand in hand, I think. Like, I think intuition is leading us towards more novel realities. It's kind of an interesting way to think about going about it. Because, like, with intuition, I think it ties in directly with the idea that, like, going back to sort of that base concept of, like, we're already multidimensional beings by nature. For me, I like to break it down to the concept of, like, perceptions of time, and even what you were talking about, Noah, how, like, you know, it's all happening at the same time. Like, there's the now now, like, the the past now and the future now, but it's all the now. And in that sense, like, events that haven't happened to us yet, we're still connected to. And the intuition, there's actually, like, and this is something I'm really interested in, like, is there a physical correlation with our chakras related to our intuition? And I think there is. I think there definitely is, and I think that's something that each of us can begin to listen more to within our own body and be able to, like, get those hints. And that's, like, even when you think of, um, there's a great movie, um, uh, Legend of the Guardians, and it's all about, like, these these owls that, that are, it's super, like, very, very inspiring movie, but they're all just like, trust your gizzard, and, like, your gizzard will, like, lead you across the ocean to where you need to get to sort of thing. (laughs) So, I mean, like, I think intuition is actually, like, a natural evolutionary thing that is within, like, nature itself, where it's sort of pulling itself towards the light. So, opportunities and, like, things in our life, think of them almost as like sources of light that are feeding more nutrition back to us. So naturally, like the same way a plant grows, we, we, we gravitate towards it. Yet through our free will, we have the choice to like go away from it. And we'll still find light where we go. But I mean, I think there's more potent aspects of it when we think up with that intuition part. But yeah, like um, Rebecca, sure. I, I would... Uh, just continuing along with that, like, in specific, what do you think about the idea of, like, physically being able to notice something within our chakras uh, sort of related to, like, that gut feeling or intuition? Um, Well, with chakras, I mean, if you're sensitive enough to energies, maybe you can feel a chakra that's closed, but if you're not, there's always ways of testing it with um, pendulums. 
for one. That's what I use. Um, I think that's the only thing I know that you could use, tool. Um, but, yeah, like, even if you meditate and concentrate on a chakra that may be closed, let's say you want to be able to speak your mind more clearly and speak your truth, um, then focus on your throat chakra, let's say, and during a meditation. And just imagine that chakra opening up. And I've actually done that before, like, say, before going over to a friend's house who I need to talk to about a certain issue, and I want to be able to say everything that um, that's on my mind. Well, I sat down and meditated on my throat chakra, and I found that I was very satisfied with how I spoke and um, what I got across to him. And, I, yeah, like it, it worked pretty well for me. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, like Reiki and healing touch and all that stuff, I think that's great because it balances people. And then when they go out, they're a little bit more, like, aware and sense, like, receptive um, I don't know. It's, I just, yeah, I think Reiki and healing touch is a great thing. Yeah, I think um, I, I agree. I, I, I think if if we were trying to like explain to a person why they might want to be interested in something with, with such as energy healing and, and chakra work and, and things like that, if you could explain to them the concept of intuition, you could. Ex- I think this is a, an interesting way of thinking about it. It'd be like energy does you know I'll put it forth as a question. Does energy work? help us naturally become more in tune with aspects such as our intuition with like these multi-dimensional awareness elements within like ourself so to speak and uh yeah no i think i think i think it definitely i think it definitely does and th- and that's where like by by like working on ourselves by looking inwards and by like cleaning our own doorstep then through that process we prepare ourselves to be able to like move through this world through the psychological gymnasium with more efficiency if we can if we can you know maybe you can think about intuition as almost like a percentage be like oh today i only like synced up with like 50 percent of my intuition but maybe some days i'm like 80 and then like the way you can almost gauge Mm -hmm. your intuition is based on the synchronicity that's coming back to you so i mean again like in the same way we were talking with noah like these are sort Mm -hmm. of ideas that until we actually have this conversation i'm like actually like this is some of this is new to me like some of this i'm I'm thinking about it as i'm saying it i'm just like well it it sounds like it makes sense Mm -hmm. so i mean give me uh guys in the live chat give me an 11 11 if uh if you think we're 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 on to something here (laughs) or maybe so i don't know but yeah i I, well i do know i do know it's all about it's all about yes and no and that's a k-n-o-w so yeah (laughs) so anyways um I, we got okay, so we do have the other caller who who is uh, joining us, and uh, oh, we do have another caller who is also going to be joining us. So that caller who we're going to bring on first is going to be Lucid Philosophy, and he was the fellow who I mentioned earlier in the show when I talked about the content creators who are submitting their videos to the Facebook.com slash Paradigm Shift Central. So he'll be coming on, and uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm I'm interested to hear what he has to add to, add to the conversation, and also after that we'll be bringing on Bryce as well, and uh, we still got Noah with us and Rebecca with us. So so this is a this is a pretty pretty solid conversation circle right here, boys and girls. So pretty excited about that. But <laughs> we'll just keep rolling and uh, see what comes out of it. And we got about an hour left in the show, and I think it will be worthwhile if we uh, set ourselves up to do a meditation closer to uh, the later half. But we'll get there when we get there. So gonna bring on Lucid Philosophy, and we'll go from there. So Lucid, if you're ready, here we go. Hello, Lucid. Yo, man, can you hear us? Maybe? Maybe Hello? not? Yo, okay, yes. Can you hear us? Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, man. I think we're okay. Yeah. So, as long as, yeah, if you got, like, your player paused in the background, then I think we're good. So, is that, uh, yeah, if it's all synced up, man, then, uh, please, uh, Lucid, introduce yourself, uh, if there's another name you want to go by, and, uh, where you're calling from, and then what you would like to bring to the show tonight. Sorry, Lucy, did you hear me there? Yeah, how's it going? Uh, yeah, I'm uh, from Cleveland, Ohio, and we actually have a... I'm getting feedback. <laughs> okay, are you... I like... I'm just... Uh, the episode in the background, I just want to technically sort this out. The episode in the background, is it paused? Because if there's a delay through Skype, that would be unusual. 
but hold on, hold on. <laughs> I don't know if he's like hearing me through Skype or All right, hearing that should me be good. Now. Here, so. <laughs> All right, are, did we no, fix it? No, there's no delay through Skype. Okay, so are we good? Okay, so um, yeah, like when I say thunder, you say clap. So one second, thunder. When I say thunder, you say clap. Thunder. Yeah, okay, there's definitely still a delay. <laughs> All right, anyway. I can hear you now. Okay, is it is it perfect now? Maybe. All right, okay, so anyways, as confusing as this is, I apologize, but if there is a delay, we'll just figure it out anyways. But uh, Lucid, I'm just going to set you up, so please go ahead, introduce yourself, and what would you like to bring to the show? Slight pause. All right. Yeah, I'm from uh, Cleveland, Ohio, and uh, we actually have a meditation group here uh, that does uh, regular meetings every Tuesday, and we have about 150 people now um, from our Facebook group, which is awesome. And nice. we've been pretty much connecting uh, like groups of people that are going to festivals. Um, we have a group of uh, drum circle uh, guys, and then we also have a group that does like art and expression as well. And it's really amazing connecting to all these groups of people in this area because there has been such a like great like dark shroud over this city for like so long. And uh to see like us come in and like raise a vibration and bring some light into the matter and uh that's what we're all about here. So <laughs> um we're pretty much going to like festival to festival and uh, pretty much sharing ideas and sharing these concepts and uh, these, you know, uh, everything that we can bring, you know, um, just allowing ourselves to be and allowing others to express themselves as much as they can be uh, and uh, coming to these festivals. And we're actually now, um, you know, part of, the change and it's kind of amazing like seeing the transformation and seeing the change in people and seeing people wake up more and more and uh it's quite amazing <laughs> because i feel like what you what you guys were talking about like going out and meeting people and creating connections and you know changing people's perceptions i feel like you have to be the change you know you have to go out and change yourself and change the way you you see the world and change the words that you use and how how you you know, do your mind, body, spirit, and um, how you align to what you want and truly um, feel, like, to your core, and then bring that, you know, bring it as much as possible. And uh, know that you're already, you know, you are already it. It's like, <laughs> I feel like that brings it back, and that traces it back all the time. It's like, you are you are already multidimensional. You are already infinite. And we are here to remind ourselves that like we are here to come out of the thinking mind and come to the heart and open up and maintain that as much as possible and maintain the allowance of that to be ourselves and to, to whatever we need to do to allow ourselves to do that and whatever we need to express and whatever needs to come up and whatever needs to happen, allow it to happen and allow it to express itself. And that's what we do. I feel like that's what we need to do to create change within ourselves and to create change um, globally. And you are infinite. You are powerful. You have a purpose to do this um, if you feel the need to do that, you know, like, uh, yeah, just to come together and feel that and share that and express that. Cool, man. That was a, no, that's well, well said, man. And uh, it's awesome to hear that, that you guys are getting some regular, regular meetings where you are just, the community as it's uh, naturally evolving so I yeah we do we do like meditation we do energy work we do we talk about we have a little group about like lucid dreaming and we actually write down our dreams and if we have anyone uh that comes up like any of our friends that come up in our dreams we write them down and we connect that way through this multi-dimensional aspect that we're always there we're always sharing these ideas, sharing these concepts, just getting out there as much as we can and, and expressing like really who we're all about and what our message is and mm -hmm. actually being that message, being that change, being who you truly are. And uh, it's, whew, 
just get it. You know, <laughs> how I say, yeah. get it, <laughs> get it, get it. Cool, man. Um, and uh, for I, I just got to ask, like, for the people who are in uh, the Cleveland area, what is like, what is the page uh, on your Facebook? Because I mean, technically, like, unless I'm mistaken, but like, this isn't. This is just like another thing. This isn't like a paradigm shift community. This is just a community that's shifting paradigms without the title, but. Uh, what like what or what do you, what do you guys like? What do you, do you guys have a name for what you do? And do you got a Facebook page you can think you can link us up with? Oh yeah. Um, well, right now we just go by meditation group, and then we also have yeah. a group Space Rangers, and we're all creating Space websites <laughs> right, right now. We're all kind of like new at this and starting off this, and I feel like we're just now taking the first breaths and taking the first baby steps in in this mm. direction, and we kind of want to, you know, spread it out and get connected to people like you guys and uh mm-hmm. yeah but oh, cool, i'll man. put up a post in the chat and then we can kind of go from there yeah but, yeah 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 and I'll, I'll put that link into the show notes on youtube once but i like what you there. guys were talking about like intuition you know like really trusting right. uh trusting your intuition trusting like all the see we we have all these you know, the five senses and it all comes in, but we, we also filter out a lot. So really it's about opening up and it's about trusting um, that intuition, trusting that feeling more so than using your rational or logical thinking mind. It's coming from that and moving into your heart. And once you're able to open up and maintain and compose, you know, stay composed with that maintained open heart, you're able to bring in so much information. You're able to really tap into all the infinite possibilities of who you truly are. So the more and more you do that, the more and more you trust and you let Mm -hmm. go to whatever is holding you back and whatever um, stops you from doing what you love doing and expressing yourself and like actually being in the moment. Cool. um, Rebecca, go ahead. Yeah. yeah. um, Coming from like a place of heart, I find helps you. Um, forgive people and not, like, cling on to, um, like, karmic patterns and things like that. Um, because really, like, we're, we're, like, in, I don't know, like, we're all learning and it's, like, not even worth getting really, really upset about what someone else does to you because they're not really doing it to you. It's just, like, something within themselves that they maybe can't, like... I don't know how to articulate what I'm trying to say, but yeah, like it helps um, increase forgiveness when you come from your heart. Yeah, you don't and react really... anymore. You come out of like non-resistance, you know, non-reacting, and you actually really open up to it. And it's it's you out there, you know. So it's really all just reflections of yourself. So when when something does happen and you emotionally react or emotionally it emotionally pushes your buttons or you you just like oh you know you get that first initial reaction, you know, stay, maintain an open heart, you know, and, and feel it, just really like bring it in and, you know, allow whatever needs to happen, happen. And that is one of the best ways to really just like trust yourself and trust the the flow of it and to really like connect with people to really get in there and, and speak, you know, and listen and feel what they're actually feeling. Cause really you're just tapping into all that. Yeah. I think um, I'll just add in a quick thought, and then I'm um, actually going to bring Noah on, give him a chance to respond, and uh, then we'll bring Bryce on after that, and we'll just continue the conversation here. Definitely hitting, hitting upon some key things. And, and uh, what um, what I was going to say, I mean, kind of, it's really interesting, because, I mean, I think definitely for, for all of us who, who are part of this conversation, and for many of us who are listening, we're, we're moving towards that, that that stage in our life where, like, literally we don't even bother like getting annoyed anymore like it's like a waste of energy to like get like sort of like upset or or, like making excuses for yourself sort of thing but rather being able to shift your paradigm of any any experience that comes your way with the idea that like it's there to be able to like teach you something and uh yeah i definitely had some experience with that like just like a few days ago where like i easily could have like got like mad over something but then like i didn't i was just like no no like there's there's like an important lesson and 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 by like not getting mad at it it allows me to like see that lesson with more clarity and then to be able to learn it like more effectively so i don't get myself like stuck in this loop where like i'm repeating the same thing over and over again but i uh, yeah like uh I, I would think you guys sort of agree with that idea so yeah. um 
Yeah. So okay. So let's. Let, I'm just gonna bring on Noah, and um, we'll, we'll just see what he has to add, uh, either continuation with that or anything else, and then we'll uh, we'll bring Bryce on after that. So Noah, bring you back on. Yeah. Um. I just kind of wanted to. I I was just listening to all that, taking it in, and you mentioned something about the dream, the dream thing. Um. I just wanted to kind of share a few things that I, I, I've recently went through. It's, it's been awesome. Uh, there's a there's a some a lot of really kind of cryptid teachings in some of the ancient oral texts that I'm, that I learned in the Kabbalah that that relate to dreams uh, and how our dream interpretation, like if you talk tell a dream to someone and they interpret it positively, like they literally change the effect of of the dream that it has, um, because they say that a dream can be at one sixtieth of prophecy. Um, and also one sixtieth of death. Uh, so I just just this idea that uh, you know you're talking to a friend. Be careful, you know what you tell them and ask. And if you really want you know someone to interpret your dream, just like ask them. And, and what's awesome about it is that I was, I had a little bit of a troubling dream a few weeks ago, and somebody just it's just like like humbled themselves enough to just allow whatever message they were feeling from my dream to come out and interpret it my dream and in such a beautiful way and it actually completely like transformed my feelings uh on this on this level so it did change the world in that regard but there is this deep connection between the interpretation of a dream and uh the result of of what that dream like can bring about um and i just kind of wanted to share that because i i think that people in this community for some reason we always end up uh talking about dreams and, and me and skull have had kind of countless conversations about dreams and I don't know if we've ever kind of, I don't know if I've ever even shared that on the air, but just this, and, and I, I would just share it again quickly just because I, I, I think it's just awesome for people to really consider and to contemplate uh, for people's own growth and actually for uh, people connecting to their own hearts and to their own intuitions is to look at their dream state as literally a, a blueprint in a, 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 a big world of the inside that, it, that because it's the inside, the entirety of your lineage is there and they're and they're inside of you and they're communicating messages to you all the time. And so your intuition is, is also like the idea that it's also like your ancestors and so that the more we connect to the dream world, the more we're actually yes, there's messages that are kind of uh blabble and they mean nothing, so to speak, but that, that there is something really profound that we can learn objectively from our dreams through the the wisdom that exists within our ancestors. Like, let's say my ancestors learned something 1,000 years ago, and it somehow changed their brain chemistry 1,000 years ago and, and changed the way that they had their kid or the, somehow changed the physical DNA or something. that Somehow the memory is stored within me somewhere, and that through a certain dream or through a certain scenario that arises, that then comes to me, and then I learn something that I had not yet known previously. Um, and I've had certain strange experiences that I haven't remembered enough of yet, where I've been in a room and I've actually, you know, seen uh, a big library of ancient books. And I, I, well, I've also seen like messages, uh, and people have spoken to me about things that I did never had knew known before, but I just hadn't yet remembered it when I woke up I just it was at the tip of my tongue and I was like wow that was profound like, I, I need to learn that again um, and it's just like this idea that there's this whole classroom this field of knowledge within our dreams that is not only like from our unconscious but that our unconscious equates with our ancestors and that there's yeah. so much we can learn to discover and I just wanted to share that because I don't know if I've ever spoken about that on the air but I'm really working on kind of creating this huge synergy between DNA dreams and ancestors and it's mm fascinating but yeah just want to cool share man that. no i think uh yeah I, i'm also pretty interested in that idea um yeah even just like you know sort of being able to expand our definition of like what the higher self is and sort of encompassing ideas of the higher self as being also like our ancestors as well and and also like the part of ourself that can see into the future so i'm gonna bring i'm gonna bring on bryce and uh, we're just going to continue the conversation, guys. I'm actually just going to step away for just a couple minutes. Got to take care of something, but I'll be back. So, Bryce, let me bring you on. Let me just make sure everything's okay here. So, Bryce, hello. Can you hear us? I can hear you fine. Can you hear me? Perfect. 
perfect, man. Cool. So, Bryce, uh, just introduce yourself, and uh, and if you guys just, you know, moderate yourself here, and you guys can just continue to talk. But, uh, yeah, just, Bryce, go ahead. Introduce yourself at any point that you want to hit upon that has come up. And, you know what, I'm going to mute you because your thing's kind of weird and staticky, and I'll bring you on later. So, okay. Okay, so, Bryce, go ahead. It's all you, man. All right, sure thing. Thanks. Uh, first, I wanted to thank everyone so far who's been, like, sharing and stuff, and also everyone on the live chat. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm Bryce. I also go by Bricycle. Um, I travel all over. I don't really have a set destination. And I just wanted to sort of talk a little bit about, like, what everyone else is talking about a little bit, like intuition and things, because it's kind of synchronicitous. I've been thinking a lot about this recently. And um, I don't know uh, how others have been have been feeling. Like, have has everyone else been feeling sort of like a – a shift going on like within themselves and things anyone uh, mm, kind of kind of like what oh yeah um um hmm i'm starting to um believe more that well like, um, have you ever heard of shape shifting? Yeah. Um, I had that happen to me like last weekend with another girl. Okay. Um, and it sort of felt like a, like how people talk about twin flames. It kind of mm-hmm. felt like that. And I was seeing past lives in her face, and she was also seeing them in mine. And I don't know if like, yeah, um if I was seeing mine through her face, like, mm-hmm. I I don't know what it was, but, um, yeah. All right, cool. What about, um, I'm sorry, I'm not really good with names. Who else is on here? Uh, Mike, uh, Mike. Philosophy. Right, uh, right. Uh, what about you? You said you were noticing, like, shifts in perception and stuff. Oh, yeah, uh, for sure. Uh, yeah, pretty much a, a shift of uh, non-conceptualizing, non-ideas, and knowing mm-hmm. that thoughts and um, intuition is and intentions are powerful. Like, yeah. Uh, when when you get in line with that, you're tapping into the synchronicity of everything going on. So it's like, you know, that that aspect of actually putting it in action and manifesting it. I feel like that is where the shift is happening right now mm-hmm. in my world, in my plane. It's, it's funny you mentioned like you know manifesting it and whatnot because uh i've noticed that uh, very recently when i've been meditating i just so suddenly have this idea what if i start like renouncing all of my like fears and anxieties and stuff you know and so um i i actually started doing that just sort of like as i'm meditating just sort of started thinking I'm renouncing all of these fears and anxieties that are no longer uh, relevant or holding me down and stuff like that. And I've noticed, like, in the last couple of days, I've just been feeling, like, so much lighter and, like, I much more space in my brain to do things. And I sort of, like, coupling that with, like, intention and stuff, it's, you know, like, all coming together. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel the same way, man. I I feel like it's it's being uh, honest with yourself as much as mm-hmm. you can, and allowing as much as you can, and trusting that, and knowing that you're going to be okay no matter what, and uh, making that shift. Yeah. Definitely, wherever that shift is carrying you, um, and whatever you, whatever you need to do in the process, you know, allow yourself to do it, and allow yourself to trust yourself while you're doing it. For sure, and um, then. Uh, sorry to interrupt. I was also gonna. Okay. I was also gonna say that like, I've also found like I'm not like a a, a certified like uh, healer or anything. I like I don't have any papers or gone to any schools. But I've like been able to, like heal a few like people like some close friends and stuff. And all the times I've been able to do that have just been almost based entirely on like intuition. I just get this idea of, like. I see where this like pain is that is located in them somewhere. And then I'm almost like just able to like look at their body, almost like an X-ray or something and be able to like, you know, 
send good intentions and vibes and, you know, uh, heal that out and also like pull out what I can and whatnot too. So, you know, again, going along like intuition and stuff, it's like such a powerful thing, you know? Mm. Mm. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I feel like everything that we conceptualize, everything that we bring ideas into, um, it limits us in some form of way. So yeah. we've got to stay open as possible of what we're actually capable of doing mm-hmm. and and allow ourselves to bring in the infinite possibilities of like really who we are. And we are really pure light and vibration yeah. and frequency. And if we're able to bring in the intentions and let go of any fears or doubt or disbelief of anything holding us back from allowing ourselves to do anything like that, healing, whatever, um, creating, expressing, um, all that, you know? For sure. It's, um, what was I going to say? Sort of like, uh, I, I don't know the actual like statistic or whatever. I know a lot of people sort of say like you, people only use like 10% of their brains, but I know that's not true. I feel like it's more like, remember reading somewhere it's more like 30 to like 40 percent or something but it's almost like what you're what you're saying lucid like you know when we turn on more parts of that but there are so many more possibilities that we can achieve that people are i think there's just sort of slowly starting to be some research about like more um you know people who are using more brain power and stuff like there are videos being passed around of like you know people being able to like use their chi to like you know start fires or whatever not on purpose but you get the idea yeah Hmm. well the school of remembering is teaching like um coming from the heart more like Mm -hmm. we've kind of shifted from like ancient civilizations they they uh operated more from the heart and then we kind of shifted to the mind and i think it's going back to the heart and maybe like once you open the heart more, it helps activate part of your brain as well or something. I don't know. Yeah. No, I think that's totally true because I remember reading or hearing somewhere that um, your heart, like it, when you think of the, like your heartbeat, you, like the EKG and stuff, and, you know, how it has that the thing, you know, like the beep, 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 and it's keeping track of your heartbeat. Um, well, in between those beeps is like tons of information being sent, not just to your brain, but throughout your whole body. Mm-hmm. And there's like been some scientific research that shows like, that's also, you know, like part of your heart is like almost sending out this like electromagnetic field, which people can call, you know, many things like, uh, an aura or whatever. And, um, just sort of saying, you know, like what you were saying about connecting your heart and your brain, you know, like the more in tune we are with our heart, the more information from our heart to our brains can make us have so many infinite possibilities. Mm-hmm. All right, guys, I will say uh, back back in the chair. So uh, just getting caught up on some of the stuff that you were talking about, and um, actually I'm just gonna I'm just gonna bring Noah. I'm just gonna allow Noah to sort of jump in, and, and I'm just gonna sort of continue to listen. And uh, yeah, no, I'm I'm actually pretty excited with the uh, with the different ideas that we got going around. So let's let's keep that going. Let's uh, continue to sort of spiral here. So Noah, just bringing you back on, and then um, either Lucid Bryce or Rebecca, just feel free to uh, add in on top of that. So Noah, bringing you back on. Here we go. Hey guys, I uh, I wasn't really paying attention to the last like two minutes, so <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, but Bryce is the man. Um, <laughs> I just I got to say that I, we should probably talk about this actually, and this is like the intuition thing. It's like the first thing the thing that I think of when it comes to Bryce is what Bryce did, which is just it's just this idea that you don't know how amazing one little action you do makes on somebody and. Uh, you know, Bryce made a video where he just basically expressed gratitude for people in his life. And, yeah. you know, you don't need to make a video to do that. You can just call someone and say, thank you for being, like, my friend. And you don't know what kind, of, what kind of thing that can do to someone because it can make someone else be grateful for a moment and happy and smile. And then they may say something to somebody else that they never would have said before. And then that person who, 
who, who that person said something to may say something, and, and you just don't know. And it's just kind of a microcosm of how things change in this world. Um, and when Bryce said that to me, I was actually going through a little bit of a of a of a period where somebody I was in a situation where I had to like lower my life force and feel like I couldn't necessarily like be myself. I had to speak like like three levels lower and kind of like diminish the energy that I had. Um, and it was an interesting experience, but I feel like and when the second I came home, I started to listen to Bryce's video and he goes, "Don't let anybody take your fight. Don't let anybody take that away." And I was like, "You're right." And I just again and made me realize like what it is that that's part of my unique gift and that everyone has a unique gift and and they've got to cultivate it and so Bryce like you know it, it's just a great thing and it's, it's it's an amazing thing and I I just wanted to kind of tie that into the fact that you know in in my studies in Kabbalah and stuff that that people have this conception especially in the Judeo-Christian conceptions of uh, English words from the from the Hebrew uh, that like there's things called commandments, but actually what they're called are actually connections. Uh, so a sin is actually a disconnection, and a commandment, a commandment huh. is actually a connection. Interesting. Wow, uh, that makes way yeah. more sense. Yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Where did we go wrong? So, so, I mean, there's, there's all sorts of that kind of stuff from the Hebrew because it's a fractal kind of language where there's infinite meaning from each letter and word. and it's so. so but that's one of the things that, that came out of it was when I realized that it was about connection. So every time I, you know, do something for somebody else, it's not because I'm commanded, it's because I'm connected. And when I do that, I make a connection. And then that person can make another connection. And then we have more connections in the world. And that's what the whole goal of that, of that mystical path is to create connection upon connection upon connection upon connection. Uh, and so when I really realized that, I was like, wow, you know, Bryce, you did a mitzvah. That's a connection. You know, you did a huge, you did a, something good. Uh, and I was like, wow, that, that's really inspiring for me. And then now what can I do? Like, what's that little thing that I can do to somebody else that, like, inspires somebody else? Uh, so awesome, dude. Thank you. No, <laughs> thank you. That's very kind. And I'm glad you're able to, like, take something away from that and also, you know, like, utilize that and keep the snowball going. Yeah. Yeah, and I'll, I'll link I'll, I'll link Bryce's channel as well into uh, into the YouTube into the YouTube version of this episode. And um, that episode actually, Bryce, you, you didn't post that episode up on uh, Paradigm Shift Central yet. So if you want to do that, that will uh, sync it in through the main website, and people oh, sure, see sure, it sure, through the inspiration sure. station too. But uh, yeah, no, as simple as it was, I, I think that was um, a very 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 worthwhile example that that you were setting there, Bryce. And uh, yeah, no, already you know just ripples create waves. So. Um, Hold on, guys, one second. It looks like we do have another caller, but uh, they haven't queued up so, yet, so let me just double-check with them. Caller from area code 516. If you want to be brought on the air for sure, just press 1 on your keypad, and uh, then we'll know, and then we'll uh, bring you into the conversation as well. And I will say, with about 30 minutes left in the show, a reminder to those of you who might have tuned in a little late, if you would like your chance at winning some free shift buttons, then send a message to facebook.com slash paradigm ship radio and uh, you'll be entered into the draw and we'll announce that in the uh, last few minutes of the episode and of course if you want you can pass those on to someone else to share with them and of course if you want to order some in general go to paradigmshiftcentral.com slash buttons I mean I'm sure a lot of people can testify as to how awesome and how useful they are and uh, like I said for between this show and next show for every for every yeah let's do that for every two orders of buttons that that we get between this show and next show that will mean additional like free batch of buttons that we'll be giving out as a draw for next episode of paradigm ship radio so that sounds like a pretty pretty awesome deal if you ask me so um let me just check in looks like the caller hasn't queued themselves up so call from Miracle code 516 uh not too sure if you want to be brought on to the air again press one on the keypad but we'll get there when we get there but either way i just want to continue this conversation and uh again just invite either rebecca or or lucid to uh oh okay does look like the caller does want to be brought on so we'll be able to bring them on and uh yeah so we got got six people in the conversation in this conscious conversation circle that we got going on here tonight and uh thank you of course everybody for for being a part of this for all of you who are with us listening and uh for you guys as well for being a part of this conversation so thank you awesome Scott. awesome thank you all right cool so call it from air code 516 bringing you onto the air here we go Hi, Hello. it's Maria Torres from Hi, Maria. New York 
Yeah, Warmer. I haven't called in a long time, <laughs> but um, and I kind of missed everything. But I just wanted to say hi. So if, you know, if Sweet. you want to bring someone else, you bring them in, and I'll just listen because I really I just kind of called just now. So. But I oh, well, I mean, that, that's <laughs> awesome. I, I appreciate you calling in. I remember way back on a past episode, I remember you called in while you were at like a party and you actually like stepped out <laughs> of a party because you're like, this is more important. I got to call into my shifty buddies. And then you oh, did that. Oh, my God, I did. I did. And I lived for like an hour and my friend said I left. I felt really bad, yeah. but it was worth it. It's <laughs> always worth it calling and listening in either way. It's always oh, something insightful. Oh, that's awesome. Cool, cool. Well, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad you, you got a chance to call in tonight. Now, I mean, we, we were talking about intuition and, and a lot of things related to, like, just being able to try and understand what is intuition. Um, I'm not sure if you heard that part of the show, but but I'd be curious just to, to ask you, just to sort of reflect on that. Like, what is intuition for you, Maria? Hmm, I think it's, uh, it can be, like, uh, a deeper knowing of things and Sometimes we avoid, like, the red flags that come along, and our intuition will let us know. Um, but I would think that it could also be, like, if everything's multidimensional and if everything's existing on one timeline, past, present, future, I think it can be things that are repeating in our lives sometimes and, and are, are, you know, on a spiritual level, something that you're not consciously aware of and you're, like, deep in your subconscious. Sometimes you just know like something, you know what I mean, that intuition. Deja vu. Oh, right, deja vu, things yeah, like that that you can't really explain, true. but I think it could be related to um, possibly past lives, multidimensional things, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, I believe in angels yeah. and things like that too, so sometimes I think, you know, ma- family members or whatever look out for you and it could be things like that too, I think, anyway. Mm-hmm. That brings up uh, that brings up an interesting idea that like intuition is the result of a multitude of like unspecific causes, so to speak. So what we recognize as intuition is just like the sense of like, you know, like don't step out into traffic or like go this way instead of that way or like talk to that person on a bus or like pay attention and look this way. And what may be causing that may not just necessarily be like our quote unquote higher self um, in the sense that you could also think of that like kind of what Maria is saying, this, this idea of like angels, that, that would be a term that some people use in that sense, which mm-hmm. in past episodes, I, I think that is like a really interesting topic, is like how can conscious entities in a non-physical form still interact with us here mm-hmm. like, and, and can in some way still be able to like help us on our journey and and i think what they do comes through us in uh in intuition but uh yeah no i'd I'd be interested if anybody else just has any ideas on that but i'm also interested um to just sort of uh segue into some like topic about dream conversation i'd just be able to love to sort of dwell on that a little bit while we're all here but yeah no i mean what any any thoughts anybody else just feel free to jump in on on angels uh, yeah, like the, the kind of what I was saying. Yeah. I mean, I'd be curious. No, I'm sure. Okay, so just uh, no, nothing. Yeah, let's try and keep our answers concise at this point, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just since we got six of us. But go ahead, no. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I just um, the the whole idea is too. Like, first of all, for for me, I look at angels as um, the the energy, like the the kind of this energy that's just kind of flowing through creation that can be harnessed within man. Um, and but the thing about uh, angels is that from from the perspective of like where man is uh, is that angels are actually like even though angels represent like to me like the the like this perfect spiritual energy that can be harnessed within man to 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 bring into themselves to choose it but that angels like they don't have free will they don't have free choice for this and so man is like in the middle here they could sink to like the lowest of the low. Um, and and just give in to their complete animal instincts that they have their survival instincts um, without that transcendent like you know that higher awareness that they have. But at the same time, angels they just do whatever they that they were created to do. And so man kind of exists in the middle between an angel and an animal. They they can elevate higher than the angels because they can choose the good or lower than the animals because they can choose to sink to, like, the lowest depths through their creation. Um, so, like, that's mm-hmm. what it is to me. Like, it's just, yeah. Okay. Interesting. I and, was, uh, yeah, go ahead. Whoever's got a point, go ahead. I was going to, I was just going to ask a question uh, to anyone who is listening or whatever. Um, do, you, uh, do you see a difference between, like, 
quote unquote angels and like other like spiritual guides or do you see them as all like one in the same uh thing i think they're all energy <clears throat> you know right. energy never dies so i don't i don't really i guess i never thought about it but i believe in everything almost it seems like i mean i'm open to kind of imagining or entertaining any idea even if i'm not like a hundred percent convinced of everything but i think ultimately it's they're there to help you and i'm right. sure some of them maybe aren't but i don't I, I wouldn't say that one is like better than the other or anything i think it's all kind of the same thing an energy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah i feel like they could go be ahead, a multitude yeah. of things from coming from different people i mean uh they could be future representations of ourselves they could be higher selves of our you know of our own parts of our psyche they could be um mm -hmm. uh collective archetypes they could be so many different things. I, I think sharing the perceptions and sharing the perspectives from each and every one of us and gaining a better understanding of what truly these things are and then also cam comparing different religions, different cultures and bringing, right. bringing in a wide spectrum of understanding it and just being open to it and not saying it is one way or the other. Mm -hmm. Right. I totally agree with that. I was asking because I've had a few dreams where there have been these like people in the dreams who have come to me and essentially said, Hey, like I'm a guide like here to help you or something. And, um, you know, it wasn't like, you know, just like we're an angel or anything. It's just like, you know, I'm, I'm here to help, you know, call us or, you know, through like meditation or whatever to and we'll, we'll help you in some way. Yeah, actually, that's kind of an interesting, <clears throat> it's kind of an interesting idea uh, that I've thought about is the idea that like our guides, I mean, some of them are just like, I guess it's maybe different for different people, but it's kind of like this idea that like until you actually like ask for help, they don't really step in in the potential that they could. So, I right. mean, if someone's actually curious about this idea, that would actually be almost something that you could test in a sense, is like observe your reality, be conscious, and then try that. Try like going into a scenario where you're just like, all right, guys, like if you want to help me, like now is like an opportunity to help me. And it doesn't have to be something drastic. Like mm -hmm. it could just be like something where you're like going downtown and you're trying to open yourself up to that intuition. So, I mean, again, like asking the, for the guides to sort of like communicate with you would mean that you have to be preparing yourself to receive the yeah. messages that are coming through. And again, like that's where it comes through as the, the intuition, kind of what we were talking about earlier. So yeah, no, yeah, exactly. I, would, I would encourage people to just work with that idea. And then if they want to, you know, t if they want to do something with it, then that's cool. But I mean, yeah, no, that was just something I heard a while back. But um, let me just, okay, uh, somebody, somebody other than uh, Lucid Bryce or and, uh, Noah, um, Maria or Rebecca, do you guys got some thoughts? I want to put in? Um, I'm brushing my teeth, so hold on a sec. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair enough. Um, oh, okay, well, I, I was going to say, I'm, I'm curious. One thing that I'm really always interested in is, uh, if, is sharing some dream experiences that we are comfortable with sharing because I feel like as much as we are in this reality, like this is pretty consistent, but there's some stuff happening to us like within the dream realms that is like some really very interesting stuff. And if we could remember it perfectly, I'm sure each of us would have, like, a really, like, thick story to tell, even just about, like, something that happened last night. And I'm kind of curious if anybody feels that they got something, uh, with, you know, preferably, like, a, a recent dream that they feel that they could share, that they, they were able to, uh, that they were able to recall in some way or another. So just kind of putting that, putting that out there. Um, recently, I feel like I've been dreaming, um, it's not, like, it's very vague, but the other night it almost felt as if, um, like, a Buddha or, like, some, like, higher ascended master was sort of, um, um, like, in me or something to, it's hard to describe, but I was, tr like, when I, when I dream sometimes I try to be, like, not have anxiety kind of thing, and because sometimes, like, I have that, and what helps me relax is just um, basically doing what I do to relax in waking life is, like, meditate and just, like, calm my mind. And uh, so recently, I, like, I felt like there was some kind of, like, um, entity with me 
He was helping me through my anxiety and my dream. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. totally. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, anybody else, just uh, feel free to go in. I, um, I actually had a dream. I forget if it was yesterday or the day before. And... Uh, it was kind of strange. It was, I was at first in this old house that before my parents had moved, I was in this old house with them. And um, I was talking to my mom about something. And my mom had told me that she'd like left my grandmother at like a bus stop or whatever. And uh, my grandmother, like in reality has like Alzheimer's. And so when my mom had told me this in the dream, I was just like, devastated and like crying and stuff and so then I decide like oh I'm gonna go find my grandmother and then like the next thing I know as soon as I step outside I'm like on a highway and it almost literally turned into like the matrix or something where I'm like fighting all of these like shadowy ninjas and like throwing them into cars and like jumping all over the place and stuff and somehow I end up in like a armored car and I'm fighting all of these, like, other ninjas or whatever they were. There's just these, like, black figures. And suddenly the, like, walls to the, like, armored car are, like, closing in and I can barely move. And then at that moment I remember, oh, I'm dreaming. So then I just sort of, like, slam my fist into the armored car and, like, suddenly <laughs> everything just dissolves into nothingness. And then I had woken up. I don't I have no idea what any of that means though. Interesting. Oh, one sec. There we go. Yeah, no, um I like what you, how you compared it to like the scene from the Matrix and stuff. I can see that. It, it, it almost was. It was so pretty strange, exciting. Right? Like, <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> That's funny. Um, okay, I think uh, I'm just trying to think if there's something. Do you guys want me to sort of like share something that I can recall from a few dreams ago? Should I do that too? Do cool. it. Yeah. Okay, so um, at, like yeah, like my my dreams. I mean, dreams are. It's always interesting to observe like the patterns of how our dreams change over time. Because like as we change, our relationship with our dreams change. So I mean, if that if at times like where you're just like, you're like, hmm, that's weird. Like, you know, like my dream, like I'm remembering my dreams in a different way. Like that's a reflection of what you were doing, like in the physical and how that ripples into like the spiritual realms as well. But, uh, my dreams, I've been able to remember them more so. And I think a lot of that, or I know a lot of that has to do with just the consistency of writing them down. And obviously for anybody listening to this, if you want to get into a relationship with your dreams and definitely writing them down is like the fundamental like step yeah. in the process in addition 100%. to like, yeah, in addition to like meditation and like just conscious observation within the moment and stuff. But what I do to, um, <clears throat> I'm just trying to, Okay, I'll just say, I'll just say one thing. Like from my dream last night, a bunch of weird stuff happened. I totally can't honestly remember all of it. But what I do specifically remember is seeing another like UFO pe- uh, hexagram shaped object up in the sky. Um, yeah, I definitely saw that. But it was like it was it wasn't it was more like a projection. It was almost, almost as if like someone was shining a projection of this image up onto the sky. So kind of similar to Harp, I guess. But anyways, no, I just thought that was interesting to take note of. Anytime I see like UFOs in dreams. I, I usually remember it because I will like be in the moment. And I'll just be like, like or in, in, historically in my dreams, I'll try to like film that in my dream, and I'll be like, yes, I'm getting footage of a UFO. This is gonna be awesome. And then I'm just like, damn it, I lost the footage when I woke up. So still working on a technology to be able to email dream footage to myself, maybe someday. But um, another thing I remember uh, a couple of nights ago, I had like this dream of like an asteroid coming to Earth. And uh, I just remember this one really heavy emotional moment where I was, like, talking to another person, like, really eye to eye. And I was just, like, getting them really to, like, reflect on, like, how much love that there is in their life, like, right now. And, like, just making them, like, not trying to make them sad, but just trying to make them realize, it's like, it's like do you realize that, like, if this asteroid comes, like, do you realize, like, how much is being, like, taken, like, is being taken from us in this moment? Like, how much we 
you're losing? Like, do you realize like how much like love that there already is right now in your lap? And then like I was saying this to the person, and then like in my dream, like I started crying, and then they started crying, and they were just like, "Holy crap! Like you're right, you're right." And then so like accepting this love, and then being able to observe it, and then being able to accept like this inevitable fact that an asteroid is coming. And then what actually ended up happening is that the asteroid actually like disintegrated coming into the atmosphere and like ended up being just like a small little rock which is pretty much how it happened in the Simpsons episode as well but 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 then it was just like it was just like wow like it's like how it's like it didn't happen like you know we're still alive and then just thinking as to like how that person's life would have been changed because that's almost like a scenario that could have played out in in real life in some way or another but no that was just that was just something um that happened within me so i i think with dreams i think it's important i said this before sometimes it's not so much being able to remember the specifics of what happened in a dream but more so it's being able to observe how the dream make you felt and then being able to like develop that relationship with the dreams that you have in that way and uh yeah i mean there's a lot to talk about dreams and i would like to get a few more um thoughts in and maybe uh lucid to to just get some of your thoughts on like why you think dreams are something that we should be interested in and then from there we'll segue it into our closing meditation and uh, I, I do want to just put it out there um, does anybody else feel that they want to lead us into our meditation tonight mm. anybody Bryce Bryce maybe yeah I might be down too or lucid lucid maybe yeah yeah I do some guided meditations as well okay cool all right okay well that, that's <laughs> let's Let's go with that then, since uh, he was first to put his hand up to volunteer, so that works for me. Sweet. Um, but yeah, okay, so Lisa, just maybe um, you, you can almost like segue this in, into setting us up in the meditation, but just I'm curious as to like what your response would be, just why should we be interested in our dreams and studying dream exploration? Yeah, I feel like dreams are very important to be aware of and uh, to to bring up uh you know, lucidity in your dreams because I feel like they have a huge impact on how you emotionally express yourself. So like a lot of times you get into uh, an experience where it's too emotionally intense for you to feel. Um, so a lot of times in a dream, you'll have these scenarios play out uh, however they represent or how, however the symbology of them are. But usually they're very uh, emotionally intense like you were just talking about like an apocalypse and the other one was talking about ninjas attacking him and being in an armored car so it just builds and builds and builds and builds and builds until it gets to uh, an intensity point and that intensity point is where we actually let go and start to maintain and and uh, expand our awareness and come from within and we're able to uh, gain that grounding we're able to gain, gain that alignment and uh, bring some spaciousness and light into the matter and we're able to uh, uh, kind of guide and to accept uh, where it's going to go. So it's it's really interesting how dreams um, carry on that impact within our lives. So you're constantly learning within your dreams, so why not utilize them as a form of a practice or a discipline or something in your life too? You know, uh, you know, increase, expand your imagination, expand your creativity, and uh, it's it's really interesting because of our like dreaming group that we have. We actually we actually write down all of our dreams that we have or all of the dreams that we can recall, and a lot of the dreams are linked. Like we will actually have dreams about each other, you know, people in our lives that we connect with, and and they will they will be very similar in in you know. The, uh, certain objects or certain ways we're thinking or perceiving and it's just how it plays out it, you know we are really more connected than you know than we know if you haven't seen the movie uh, I Am this documentary totally check that out <clears throat> sure it goes into a lot of that alright is it um, on Netflix or something or just YouTube or what I, I think most of it is on YouTube. I'm not sure. I, I used to have a Netflix account. I don't anymore, but um, it might be on Netflix. I don't know. But, yeah, awesome. yeah check out I Am by uh, Tom Shadiak. It's so, really good. It talks about a lot of like what we're talking about and stuff. Yeah, it's the, uh, the director of Ace Ventura as well. So, <laughs> interesting too. Which, is the whole, I, which I believe is part of the story. was uh, yeah. like a life-threatening 
circumstance that happened to him and, and how that like it related in him being able to like see himself a little bit more but yeah so um okay at this point there's 10 minutes left in the show so um unless somebody really feels that they have something to add i think now would be a good time to sort of set set lucid up to do this to uh lead us into a bit of a guided meditation so um is that okay with everybody unless anybody got like something I'm like cool last is that cool, cool? That? Is that, that's cool no that's good with you too i think <laughs> no sitting there still but anyways <laughs> <laughs> all right so um let me just uh switch things over here so i'm going to mute everyone except for except for lucid and then i'll bring you guys back with the last few minutes in the show so thank you again. Awesome conversation so far. And, of course, you can check out this and past episodes at paradigmshiftcentral.com slash PSR. So, Lucid, uh, just one of the ways that we can do this um, is to just sort of, like, set us up into a comfortable position. And then I'll play some audio track that we can use to meditate to as, a, like, part of our mindfulness meditation or whatever it is that you want to set us up with so i got some i'll give you a little bit of a choice here so i got some uh brow chakra some uh brow chakra with flute i got some uh i got some like 396 hertz i got some 417 hertz i got some of the other chakras anything out of that that you think yeah throw in some binaural beats or some hertz or yeah some hertz okay we'll go with some hertz so uh we'll play some uh we'll play some 417 hertz which is uh (laughs) Yeah, which is pretty good. So, transmutation. All right. So, Lucid, uh, just let me know when you want us to play the file for the music, for the audio, and that will run. We'll run that for about four minutes, and then we'll come back after that to close off the show. So, we'll go from there. So, is that cool with you, man? Sound good? Yeah. All right. Okay. So, I'm muting myself. So, it's all you from here. Yeah, you can you can play it now, actually, if you want to just play it in the background. Oh, it's actually, um, okay. Um, it's like a four-minute file, you said. All right, okay, let's do that. Okay, so if everybody just wants to get comfortable, then uh, we'll just have this sort of playing underneath, and then uh, when you stop talking, I'll just bring up the volume for a little bit, and that will sync mm-hmm. us up to about six minutes in total. So, yeah, well, uh, let's let's play this now. Let me let's get started here. So, All right, so if everybody wants to get comfortable, and uh, go ahead, Lucid, it's all you. Yeah. Yeah, everyone get comfortable. Take a nice few deep breaths. If you're sitting in your chair, just uh, keep your feet flat-footed on the ground and um, your spine straight and your neck resting delicately on your spine, not too far forward, not too far back. If you're sitting on the ground, you can do half lotus position or cross-legged position with your palms up or in your lap. Take a nice few deep breaths in, bringing in positive healing energy, healing light. And on your exhale, you're letting out any kind of negativity, stress, strain, toxins in your body. So you're taking a nice deep breath in, and exhale all the way out, letting go. And just get comfortable maintaining your breath, being in this moment. Just notice the rise and the fall of your breath. Bringing in that positive healing energy and letting go of any of that stress or strain. And if you notice any parts of your body, like your neck or your back, If there's any painful areas, just bring your awareness into those areas and take a deep breath into them and let it all out. Bring in some spaciousness, bring in some breath. Bring in the awareness, letting out any of that stress or strain or negativity. If you need to make any noises or sounds, you know, do so. Allow yourself. 
and if you need to spontaneously move or adjust yourself, you know, do so. Keep maintaining your breath, being in this moment. Allow yourself to be who you are. Allow this moment. If you want now, you can bring your awareness back to your breath. If you get distracted, if any thoughts come up or any unscheduled sounds, just come back to your breath. Just gently come back to your breath. Your mind may wander. It may go off in tangents. And if you get distracted, just come back to your breath. Come back to this moment and feel this moment. And if anything needs to come up, just allow it to come up. However your thoughts go about, just allow them. All you're really focused on, all you're really concentrated on is your breath. The inhale and the exhale. The inhale and the exhale this moment. In this moment, you're making the shift. You're raising the vibration, doing exactly what you are doing, being who you are. Existing and aligning to the present moment and breathing. And noticing that you come from within, you come from the core of your essence. Allow that to radiate out from your center, from your being. And notice as it radiates out, it starts to touch other people and start to connect with other people as it has its own sound, its own vibration, its own color, its own signature essence of who you are. And as it touches out, you begin to notice the shift it makes in others. It may even give a smile, you know, put a smile on their face. It may fill them with excitement as it expands out further and further from your house or your apartment to your small community, the people that you know and trust. And with every breath, it expands out. further and further cool I don't know how much time Thanks. I have but <laughs> yes thank you thank you thank you I think um, yes, I, we ended on one 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 oh like on my well, thing was... <laughs> <laughs> cool cool no that, that was good man I think that worked well having the audio in the background so thanks for that idea and that that follow through with the whole meditation. That was cool. That was cool, man. So without needing to uh, rush things, if everybody just wants to slowly transition their awareness and uh, wants to open their eyes, they can join me in uh, sort of creating some sort of like drum roll or maybe some sort of like collective ohm as we pull out the winner for the uh, for the buttons for this show. So let me just, I got, the, I got, the, I got this, this piece of paper in the singing bowl. So play in the singing bowl now. Getting ready for the big draw. So... Oh, oh, and the winner is, based on the laws of synchronicity, the winner is Phil. 
So actually, yeah, that's pretty pretty awesome. We're gonna be able to get some fill, some buttons to fill there. And uh, he was joining us in the live chat. I know he was looking for some buttons, so congratulations. And of course, reminded everybody listening to the show. For every order of buttons that goes in between now and next episode, there will be another batch of free buttons that will be given away in a draw for the show next weekend. So let's see how many buttons we can get out there. So by you ordering your own buttons, you are helping get more buttons to the people out there in the community. And there will be an after party. Here here with the Paradigm Shift Radio episode. So uh <laughs> so check in at Facebook.com slash Paradigm Shift Radio and we'll be able to get you synced up with the after party. And of course thank you again to everybody who's joining us. I'm just gonna bring everybody on one last time as we all get ready to say farewell to the internet. So uh, we'll see you in the live chat, Facebook.com slash Paradigm Shift Radio, Paradigm Shift Central com. Say bye everybody. Bye. Bye I love you. Peace and love and serenity. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Cool. Thanks again, guys. All right, what well, love. Thank you for listening to another episode of Paradigm Shift Radio. If you would like to connect with people where you are and continue the conversations further, then check out ParadigmShiftCentral.com slash buttons to order your supply of shift buttons to share with people to help invite them to this global project while also helping make new friends and building local community where you are. Shift buttons are tools to hack the matrix and tap into the synchronistic nature of reality to accelerate our collective awakening. Enter the promo code PSR into your order to receive additional bonus buttons to your supply. Thank you again, and one love.